Mozzle that, with sweeping grounds and buildings that look like they're straight out of a fairy tale, you'd forget you're right in the heart of Eltham, only 35 minutes away from Melbourne. Hello and welcome to Artifacts of the Macquarie Collection. Monsalvat is one of Australia's oldest art communes, established by Justus Georgensen after he purchased the land in 1934. Justus was an architect and passionate artist who wanted to create an environment to help cultivate arts and performing arts in his local area. So before we go further into Monsalvat, we have to talk about the man who designed it, the people who he worked with, and where the Australian art scene was at the time. Justus was born in 1893 in East Brighton and trained as an architect with a Melbourne architectural firm and studied art at the National Gallery School of Art in Melbourne. The principal at the time was renowned Australian artist Frederick McCubbin, a leading member of the Heidelberg School of Artists. Frederick McCubbin is well known for his plein air impressionist works done towards the later part of his career. With his early works painted in the style of academicism, it later evolved into a form of impressionism from the techniques that were brought back by artist Tom Roberts from his trips in Spain. McCubbin, Tom Roberts, Charles Conder, Arthur Streeton were the founding members of the iconic Heidelberg School that taught a form of tonal impressionism that favoured an artist painting directly from the landscape in front of them. The school is considered to be the core of the Australian Impressionist movement that ended with the rise of modernism. Just as in 1917, after hearing a lecture by artist Max Meldrum, he decided to join the Meldrum studio and adopt his tonalistic technique at age 24. Meldrum called it the pure science of optical analysis, using colours that had the same tonal qualities with little contrast between colours and allowing shadows, proportions and shapes to describe the image. At the time in Australia, around the 1920s and 30s, art was moving away from the impressionism and tonalism which dominated the 30 year span around the turn of the century and started moving more towards modernism and abstract styles which had started becoming popular in Europe around World War I and rose to become the predominant art movement by the 1940s. So what was Justice doing around that time? Well him and his wife took a trip to Europe and England in 1924 exploring the old towns and architecture while studying artwork by the old masters in some of Europe's greatest galleries. They stayed in Europe for five years, spending time with Max Meldrum while staying at a town of Cassis, France, and even established a studio in Paris for Justus to work on his projects. The two returned to Australia in 1929, with Jorgensen enjoying considerable success both in Paris and London, with several successful exhibitions being held in major galleries, including the prestigious Royal Academy Summer Exhibition both in 1926 and 1927, a pretty massive achievement at the time. Being inspired by his travels and moving out of his warehouse studio in Queen Street, Melbourne, Justus was working as an architect and looking to establish a studio in Eltham for artist and cartoonist Percy Leeson. After seeing the site that Montsalvat now rests upon, Justus decided to acquire the site for reasons more than just a studio. So by 1934, Justus' dreams of Montsalvat began to take shape. Like and follow for part 2 where we dive deeper into how Montsalvat was built and the artists that live there. My name is Adam McCurry and thank you for watching.